Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about home inventory, everyone should have one, is Susan Kusek. Susan is the owner of Balanced Spaces in Reston, Virginia, and is a certified professional organizer and a member of the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. Today, she's going to show us how easy it is to create your home inventory. Also in the toolbar, you will see two handouts provided by Susan. They are not the property of knowledgeable aging. So if you have any questions on these uh, handouts, I encourage you to reach out to Susan. She'll give you her contact information at the end of the webinar. The presented content does not provide or constitute medical, financial, or legal advice. The content is for information purposes only. Viewing or listening to the content does not constitute a physician, patient, dentist, patient, fiduciary client, or attorney client relationship. How are you doing today, Susan? I'm doing great. How are you, Jason? Very good. I'm looking forward to our conversation. For those joining us for the live webinar, if you have any questions, type your questions in. Time permitting, we will do everything in our power to get your questions answered. So Susan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thanks. Well, part of being organized is to have your life documents in order. And that's your will, power of attorney, medical directive, things like that. But it also includes your home inventory. A lot of people know they should have a home inventory, but haven't done one because they think it's difficult or takes too long. Well, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do. Now, these things may never happen to you, a fire, theft, smoke, floods, tornadoes, but if something does and you don't have an inventory, you're gonna be really stressed out and it's gonna be difficult to create an inventory to remember all the things you no longer have to submit to your insurance company. So the main reason for having an inventory, the one that people normally think of, is for insurance coverage. Take a look at your policy. It'll have a dollar amount for your contents coverage. It's usually a percentage of your dwelling coverage, either 50 or 75%. And you might want to check with your insurance company, too, to see if you need separate riders for expensive items. Now, another reason to have an inventory is if you're moving. I haven't moved since 1988, so I'm not sure what the coverage is now, but from research that I did, it seems that what moving companies provide is not insurance, but valuation coverage. And the basic coverage that they provide is 60 cents per pound. Now, I don't know how true this story is, but I heard that a person was, he was moving and he was driving to his new home as the moving uh, van was driving also. And he's on the beltway and going along and he hears the fire engines behind him. And up ahead is a vehicle on fire. It turned out to be his moving van. I don't know um, if he, what type of insurance he had, but when you're moving, check with the moving company, see what they cover. Check with your own insurance company to see what they want. One of the inventories that I did for a client was for a corporate move and it was the moving company that wanted an inventory because the house was 7,500 square feet and it had a lot of valuable items. Now, another reason that people might want an inventory is unfortunately, in case of a divorce, to split up who gets what. And then, of course, when somebody dies, who's gonna get all of the possessions? If you have, say, five children, it's really helpful to have an inventory so people can decide who's gonna get what. So what you wanna do is you wanna ask your insurance company what they require for a claim. Sorry, my mouse is, seems to have a mind of its own. <laughs> ask your insurance agent, if there's a fire or a theft, what information do you need from me for my home inventory? They're generally gonna say photos and or a video. Some insurance agents say they like to have a video because it shows the, the possessions in the house. I guess they think some people might just take photo of somebody else's possessions. But anyway, they're gonna want photos and they may want a video too. They're gonna to want a list of the items. Also replacement cost of items. When I spoke to my insurance company a number of years ago when I did this presentation the first time, they said, if you have listed a sofa with a photo from Ethan Allen, they have a pretty good idea of the replacement cost but I always like to put the replacement cost in myself because it helps you're the one who knows what you have and where you got it. They also want receipts for what I call big ticket items. So I keep receipts for my big pieces of furniture, appliances, computer, electronics, et cetera. 
Your insurance agent might want appraisals for valuable items and they might want them within a certain time frame. So it's always good to ask. And I looked at my policy and it says, at our request, give us complete inventories of the damaged and undamaged property, which I was surprised at. Include quantities, costs, values, and amount of loss claimed. So you might be saying, well, that sounds like a lot of work. Can I just make a video? You can. A video is a quick and easy way to do it. If you think you don't have time to do a full inventory, at least make a video. And that's one way to start out. And then you can add photos and then you can add the list as time goes on. But a video is quick and easy. And if you do a video, I recommend doing a video one room at a time. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. I've got some photos, not a video, but some photos. And when you do the videos, then copy or move them to your computer. And I'll talk about how you set that up also. Now, as I mentioned, the videos are recommended by some insurance companies in addition to the photos. The disadvantage of a video is that it cannot be edited if you get rid of something or add something new, but then you would just make a new video. So what do you need to record? Well, first, it'd be any physical asset that could be destroyed, damaged, or stolen. Some of my clients have wanted just to inventory large and valuable items. Other clients wanted to inventory every little thing. And most people do something in between. For my own inventory, I work out of my home. So one of the bedrooms in my townhouse is my office and I have a lot of office supplies. I'm not gonna list all of those, but what I'll say is office supplies and I'll do an approximate value of what they are. So how do you do an inventory? Well, most people now have a smartphone. And it's great because you can take photos. I used to do it with the digital camera, but it's much easier with the smartphone. If you have an iPad, you can take photos also. And then what you want to do is you want to copy those photos or move those photos to your computer. Now, if you don't want to use electronics, you can, of course, just handwrite your inventory. But that's that takes more time. And also you'll have to manually add up all of the items for the replacement, the total value. Some insurance companies have inventory checklists online that you can download, but again, you would have to handwrite them. Now there is software you can get for both the Windows PC and Mac computers or ones that are web-based. And with those, you usually upload your photos to the software. And then for each item, you have a record where you put in the description, the amount where you bought it, et cetera. And there are inventory apps for the smartphones also. Some of them are standalone apps and others are ones that integrate with software for the Mac or the PC. But what I use myself and what most of my clients do is an Excel spreadsheet. Most people already have Excel or a spreadsheet program on their computer. So there's no additional cost for that. If you're familiar with Excel, it's very easy to use. And this is an example of mine. Now, the example that I have of the inventory here and of the photos that I'm going to show you is my own. It's not a, somebody else's that I'm showing you. The, um, I also have as one of the handouts a template, an Excel template that has the column set up with formatting for the dollar amounts for the purchase price column and the replacement price column. But as you see on the left, I've got uh, the room listed and then the item name. You can put in a category name if you want, that's optional. But some of my clients have wanted to sort their Excel spreadsheet so that they have a list of all of the electronics together or all of the artwork together. If you think you might wanna do that, then you wanna repeat the room name at the far left so that when you sort, it'll, be, it'll still say which room it's in. And so then you would have the purchase year. I use the year rather than the full date because it's easier. And most people don't know when you bought something or maybe what you paid for it, but you might have a pretty good idea. So if you're not sure, I would suggest that you estimate the date and the purchase price. And then the replacement cost you can estimate, or you can look online for some of the larger items and then indicate where you purchased it from because that will help the insurance agent see if the replacement cost is valid. 
And what I do is I put a total at the end of each room. You'll see I've highlighted that in yellow. You don't have to total each room if you don't want to. You can just do a total for the, um, the full replacement cost. You don't need a total of the purchase price unless you want to know what you spent on all of that stuff, which is kind of scary sometimes when you look at it. So you would have one spreadsheet that would have each room, and then you would have a total at the very bottom for all of the rooms together. And here's the spreadsheet template. That's the handout that you'll be able to download. It's an Excel document, and you can enter the information yourself, but it's all set up for you. Now, the information to record besides the name of the item, um, if you want a category such as furniture, artwork, electronics, include a description such as the color of the size. You might want to include the brand name, a model number where appropriate, especially for appliances, the purchase date, the purchase price, replacement cost, the store or the website where it was purchased. I always like to include the serial number on electronics. And with the smartphone, you can reach behind the, the television or the computer and get a, a photo of the serial number. Now for artwork and area rugs and computer and TV screens, I often include the size. One inventory I did, they had huge artwork and area rugs. And so I included the size. And with the computer and TV screens, one client had, I think they had a TV in every room. And they were all the same brand, but they were different sizes. And some of them were the same size. And we ended up, instead of indicating which room the TVs were in, we created a room called electronics. And that's where we listed all of the electronics together. So you can do it how you, however you want. What you want to do, though, is have a list of things that you'd want the insurance company to reimburse you for. So what do you photograph? Well, I always start out by taking an overview of each room, and I've got some photos that I'll show you. So I stand as far back as I can, and I take a photo of the whole room. If you're doing a video, you would do the same thing. And as you, if you have a smartphone that has a um, panoramic option, you can try that. But I'll do an overview of each room, and then I will take a photo of each wall in the room. Then I'll take a, a photo of the floor and a photo of the ceiling. You might have a chandelier, recessed lighting, a tray ceiling, so you want to have a record of that also. Also take photos of anything that's built in, built-in furniture or appliances and window treatments. Then I take photos of individual large items, including appliances. For small items, I'll usually do a grouping. Maybe you've got three things on a lamp table. You don't need a photo of each of them. You could take one photo of the three of them. And if you're using Excel, you would list the individual items in the Excel spreadsheet. If you're using software, you would upload the one photo with the three items in it. And you would put it in three places, listing each of the items. Then what you want to do is you want to have a photo of the interior of each kitchen drawer and cabinet shelf. Now, I don't remove everything from the kitchen drawers and the cabinets and take a photograph, although one of my clients did want that, so we did it. It's up to you. But when for my own inventory, when I look at a photo of the cabinet shelf, I know what's there. So I don't have to take a photo of everything. I've got a photo of the shelf. And you can see some of the stuff behind it, but I don't take them out and take photos of each item. Also in the bedrooms, you want a photo of each dresser drawer in each section of each closet. I also recommend taking pictures of the outside of the home. You might have a lot of lighting that you've had installed and landscaping. If you have an attic with things stored there, remember to take photos of those items and in the garage, and if you have an outdoor shed, and if you have an offsite storage unit, you want to inventory that also. And it's a good idea to inventory your safe deposit box at the bank. So the steps to take, first you would set up on your computer folders where you're going to put the photographs. And I always recommend having a folder called inventory with the date that you're doing it. And then when you create folders for the rooms, your computer will put them in alphabetical order. 
You can rearrange those if you want. But I recommend having that set up before you start taking the photos. And then when you take the photos and or video of a room, move it right away to that folder on the computer. Because it's easier if you do it that way than having to go back and say, okay, now what, was this photo in this room or in this room? Now, you'll notice that I have a couple of folders that are not rooms. I have a folder for hobbies. I do um, acrylic painting, and so I have a lot of paint. I also do jigsaw puzzles. And so I have a folder that's called hobbies, and I have another folder that's called holiday decorations. When you put your holiday decorations up, take a photo then. It's easier having them displayed when they're on site rather than a box of them. And then your Excel spreadsheet would also be in the same folder. You'll see that at the bottom of the, of the folder list. The green check marks that you'll see are just an indication that they're synced to my OneDrive. That's one of the ways that I back up my data. So first you create the inventory folder and the subfolders on your computer. Then take the photos and videos one room at a time and immediately move them to the room subfolder on your computer. Some people like to scan receipts or appraisals and have those also. If you're gonna do that, name the scanned item as you scan it because you're not gonna be able to tell by looking at the little thumbnail what it is. So give that a name. You don't have to name the photos because you'll be able to see that easily. But when you scan receipts or appraisals, say, you know, receipt for LG refrigerator or whatever. And then put those in the same folder as the room where they live. Now here's an example. And again, this is mine, not one of my clients that I'm showing you. So this is my living room. And I stood on one of the steps going upstairs to get as big a picture as I could of the whole room. Now notice there are three boxes of papers there. I left those there because I wanted to point out your home does not have to be completely decluttered when you take your inventory photos. The insurance company is not gonna complain about that. Now, if you do have a lot of clutter around, you do wanna get that out of the way so that the insurance company will be able to see the contents of the home. And also you don't want it to be, um, to be shown as a fire hazard. After I took the, the widest angle of the view that I could, I then took a picture of each wall. So this was, the first of the four walls, and this is the second wall, the third wall, and the fourth one. And you'll see my COVID masks are hanging up there near the front door. <laughs> and disinfected and all that. Again, you don't have to have it looking like a Pottery Barn ad. Now I took a picture of the ceiling too, because I have recessed lights. And then I took a picture of the floor because I have hardwood floors and some area rugs. Make sure that you take pictures of the window treatments. You could do it with the drapes closed and or open if you wanted to. Also, I have windows. I replaced them about seven years ago. So I wanted to make sure I had a good picture of you know, one of the windows. Now, the next thing I do is I take a close up of large items. And I just have one photo of the sofa and the ottoman. I'm not gonna take a picture of each, it's not necessary. And then a picture of the recliner and the console with a few items on the top. So I don't need to take another picture of the rabbits or any of the other things because I'll have that on the list. I don't need a photo for each separate item. Then I open the drawers of the cabinets and I take a picture of each shelf. And then I open the door drawers and I take a picture of those, of the contents there. Now the cabinet that the TV sits on has 12 drawers. So I opened three at a time and I took a photo. Then I closed them, opened the next three, took a photo of that, and then the next three. And I'm not gonna list all of the movies and the, the music CDs, but I'm gonna count them. Then in the kitchen, you would open each drawer and take a photo of the contents of each drawer, open each cabinet and take a photo. Now with the Lazy Susan, I did rotate it and take another photo of the other side, but I have a pretty good idea of what's inside all of my cabinets. And so I can remember when I'm doing the list in Excel to include those. 
Then I have pullout shelves. And so I'd open each pullout shelf and take the photo. Now for closets, this is a six foot reach in closet. And so I take one photo that was as wide as the doors open. I take one photo and then I take a photo of each section of the closet. So here is the, um, the middle top part. I don't have photos to show you of all of them, but just an example. It's the middle top part. On the right hand side, it's double hang. That's the top of the double hang. That's the bottom of the double hang. Now, a couple of tips for photos. If you have expensive china and silver, take close up photos of the markings. What I do with china is I'll turn one dinner plate over and take a close up of the markings on the back of the plate. And then I'll take um, the full service of eight or 12 and I'll take either the dinner plates or the lunch plates and I'll put it on the counter and I'll take a picture so that you can see how many there are. If you have expensive silver, do the same thing. Take a photo of the close-up of the markings and then do a photo maybe of one place setting and then maybe 12 or eight or however many of the knives or the forks, one of those to show the quantity. Electronics, I mentioned earlier, take a photo of the serial number. If you're photographing jewelry, I like using a 12 inch ruler next to the item to show a size, because if you have a gold chain that is 16 inches and you have another one that's 24 inches, that changes the value. So it's good to show the size. And if you don't have a 12 inch ruler, you can always use a yardstick. And I like to lay them out on white or black poster board or foam core rather than fabric. I think they show off uh, better. And don't forget to take pictures of your smartphone and your tablets and your computers, of course. And then the contents of your medicine cabinet and the bathroom drawers. Don't forget all of that also. It all adds up. And make sure you've got enough space on your phone and on your computer for all those digital photos. So where to store your inventory? Well, you'd put it on your computer first. Then you want to have backup copies. I think of all those poor people with Katrina who had to leave so quickly and to access all of their stuff would be impossible unless they had backups with the passwords with them that they could access those. I like to keep two backups. I'm a big believer in redundancy. So you could use Dropbox. A lot of these have free storage for a certain amount. Um, mm -hmm. Dropbox, I don't know at what point they start charging, but you can check into that. It's very easy to use. I have a Windows PC, so I have OneDrive. If you have a Mac, you have iCloud that you can back up things to. Carbonite.com is one of the online backup software programs that um, I think I pay about $50 a year to back it up. And those were those little, uh, or the little green check marks you saw in my folders were backing it up to OneDrive. But I also have it backed up to Carbonite. You could put it on a flash drive or an external hard drive. An external hard drive might cost $100, but it's a lot more reliable than a flash drive. You can also print a copy. You could put a copy, either the flash drive, external hard drive printed copy in your bank safe deposit box or with a trusted friend or relative, somebody who's not right next door to you in case there's a fire, you wanna have them a safe distance away. And if you're using an inventory software program for um, the Mac or the PC, you can generally export it to a PDF file. And you'd want to have the photos also backed up separately. So an overview of the steps to create the inventory. You take photos or the video or both, one room at a time, using your smartphone or digital camera. And when you're doing the video, if you finish the room and you say, oh, I forgot to open the drawers and take a video, that's OK. Just do a video of the drawers and then store both of those videos in the folder on the computer along with the photos. Then you'd copy or move the photos or videos to the computer. I like doing it one room at a time so I don't have to remember which photos are which. If you're gonna scan the receipts and other documents, name them as you scan them and store them in the same room folder. And then enter the detailed information in whatever you're gonna use, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or if you're gonna buy software for your PC or Mac or use an app on the phone. What I find easiest is to take the photos and videos first and then I can do all of that in one day. And then I'll sit down and I'll start recording the stuff in Excel. And that might take me time over, or, over days or weeks, but I've got all of the photos. So if anything were to happen, I'd at least have that. And then enter the detailed information because you're gonna need that at some point 
if you have to submit a claim to your insurance company. So Jason, does anybody have any questions for me? Absolutely, thank you, Susan. Uh, very thorough. <laughs> First question is, how often should I review my home inventory? Well, it de depends on how much, how much um, you buy in the way of new things. The, um, if you buy just a couple of new things, you can just add them to your Excel spreadsheet or to your software program and add the photos. I had one client who had, they had somebody else do an inventory years ago and they had completely redecorated their entire very large house. And so we ended up doing a new inventory from scratch rather than trying to figure out the few things that were still there. So if you don't buy new furniture or new things, you don't need to, to update it. But it's always a good idea to look around and see, you know, oh, do I have that on my inventory? And if you have an Excel spreadsheet, you can use the search feature or look at the room and make sure you've got new things on there. Okay. Another question, Susan. Uh, do you ever have to care about depreciated value or only replacement value? Oh, that's a good question, Jason. Look at your insurance policy. Ask your insurance agent. I highly recommend that you get replacement value because otherwise the insurance company will depreciate it. So if you have a TV that's 10 years old, they're not going to give you very much money for it. And the same with, you know, soap or anything else. And it costs a lot to replace those. So check to make sure you've got replacement value. I don't think the cost is that much more for the policy, but ask your insurance agent. What are some common mistakes that people make when it comes to their home inventory? Well, the, the first is, you know, not having one and then having to do one under stress. Right. Years ago, a woman who moved into the apartment next to me and she had to move because um, her apartment had, there was an explosion. Workmen were working and something went wrong and there was an explosion and she lost everything. And she said when she submitted her inventory to the insurance company, which she had to do after the fact, she completely forgot about everything in the medicine cabinet. And there was makeup and skincare products and all sorts of things like that. And so even if you don't list every specific item, list the category like makeup with the approximate dollar amount of everything. Because when you're stressed out because you've had a fire or a theft, it's gonna be hard to remember everything that you need that you need to submit to the insurance company. Another person asked, Susan, I've lived in my home for 30 some odd years. Where do, how do I get started? Okay, well, the easiest thing is if you have a smartphone, mm -hmm. start with one room. Maybe start with the living room because that's a, usually a fairly easy one. And take as big an overview as you can. You might have to do it from a couple of different angles and then take the picture of each room. And once you've got the photos for one room, copy those or move them to your computer and then start that Excel spreadsheet. And when I do the Excel spreadsheet, what I'll do first is I'll just do a list of the things. Sofa, recliner, ottoman, drapes, lamp, floor rug. And then I'll go back and I'll put in, you know, when did I buy it? I think it was this year and I'll put in the date and where did I buy it? I have a lot of my stuff in Quicken, so it was easy for me to do that. But start your inventory, the list, just with the name of the item. That's the easiest thing to do. And then maybe take like an hour a day and go back and fill in the other information. So Susan, you had mentioned uh, some technology. So what if somebody's not even tech savvy? What do you what do you recommend as far as how to get that inventory um, going? Okay, well, if somebody's not tech savvy, what they can do is they can um, handwrite the list if they want. Okay. But what would be nicer is if they had a friend or relative who would help them who is tech savvy and would take the photos and put them on the computer and do the backup and maybe do the list for them. Excellent. Well, Susan, how can people find you? Okay, well, my website is balancedspaces.com. That's B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D-S-P-A-C-E-S.com. And my phone number is 571 752 63 Five, five. And if you have, um, if you think that you need to do an inventory, which I agree everybody needs to do one, but you aren't too sure where to start, I'm offering a special one hour virtual jumpstart for $75 for the hour, 
where we'd either use the phone or Zoom if you're comfortable with that. And I would talk you through taking the photos in one room and start your spreadsheet. You would dictate to me the information. I type over 100 words a minute and um, the or 100 words an hour, I can't remember. It's very fast though. And <laughs> you could dictate the information for me and I would enter it in to give you a start on the spreadsheet. Then I would email that to you and then you could continue on your own. Very good. As far as Knowledgeable Aging, you can find all of our archived webinars on our website, knowledgeableaging.com. Um, you can also go to our YouTube page, type in, uh, type in Knowledgeable Aging on YouTube. I encourage you to subscribe. We update that four to five times per week. If podcasts are your thing, you can check us out on Spotify, um, iTunes, etc. Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar, and this is Knowledgeable Aging. <laughs>